Hey, and welcome to Tell Samira. So today I'm going to talk about five tips to trust yourself more. Before I do that, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Additionally, if you want some unbiased feedback on a relationship or family issue you're having, feel free to email me at tellsamira123 at gmail. That's T-E-L-L-S-A-M-Y-R-A-123 at gmail. And I'll give a reply and make a video on this channel. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first way, uh, first thing we can do to start trusting ourselves more is to stop seeking validation from other people. Seeking validation from others is that we need them to to enhance our our need for approval. So we might go to other people and say, hey, do you agree? Am I doing this right? If it were you, would you do it? And the thing is, there's nothing wrong with getting people's feedback on big decisions. You're moving across country and you've never been there. You know someone there. Or you're deciding to put your child in a certain school and you're, you're new to the area. You don't know anything about the school. It's okay to ask people for their opinion. But if we get to the point that we feel that we can't make decisions unless other people agree with us, that becomes a problem. So uh, the reason I say stop seeking the validation is because we have to get to that point that if no one else agrees with what we're doing, that we're okay with it. I think uh, the reason why we start Get, uh, having the need for others to approve of us is because in childhood, maybe you didn't get that love, the affection that you needed and people didn't support you. That instead of pointing out what you did well, people pointed out what you didn't do well and it caused you to doubt yourself. So now as you're older, you, you get into a point where you don't know what to do and you're not trusting yourself and you figure that others know, know better than you. So that's something that we have to uh, work on. Uh, one way that we can stop seeking um, validation from others is to learn to pat ourselves on the back. Yes, I know that old saying, uh, but it still works to this day. For instance, if you are working, you feel the need that um, your boss needs to give you compliments or say how great you're doing and if you don't get that you feel sad and you don't you feel like you want to leave even though you like the job you know one thing you want to do is try to step back and, and encourage yourself and say yes I am doing a good job if nobody else notices I'll pat myself on the back if nobody else calls my name out in a meeting saying hey if, if it wasn't for this person, we wouldn't have been able to get this new contract. Hey, that's okay because I know I did a good job. So, so what if they won't pat me on the back? Also, we sometimes will look for validation, looking for compliments on our looks. You know, so we might post pictures to Instagram or to Facebook just so people can say something about how we look. To stop looking for that validation, what I would suggest is to look at your motives. Why are you posting your pictures to Instagram? What, what are you trying to get from other people? You know, uh, so in order to, you know, stop doing that to give yourself what it is you feel that you need from other people. So if you know you look good, you can say to yourself, hey, I really look good. I like this about me. I like this this outfit. I like this clo this the clothes I'm wearing. Instead of looking for it from outside people, because the thing about look, seeking validation from others is like a beast. You can never get enough likes on Instagram. You can never get enough people to compliment you on how pretty your skin is, because if it's an inner issue, you got to work on that first because no amount of lights is going to fix that so you will find yourself 10 years from now whatever the, the hottest platform is still trying to get validation from people because you haven't fixed that issue that's within uh, another reason uh, uh, to stop seeking a validation is again because you have to have to learn that uh i'll go with step number two that uh except mistakes are inevitable what I mean by this is sometimes we don't trust ourselves because we just believe that we are perfect. We think others think we're perfect. And the truth is other people don't think that we're perfect. You know, it's okay to make the mistakes, you know, to trust yourself more. You have to understand you will make the mistakes. They are inevitable. What I mean by that is instead of always asking for permission, like if you're at work asking, hey, well, can I do this? Can I do this? You go over to someone's house. Um, 
be, instead of just having a seat with your friend? Is it okay if I sit down? You know, you've been to your friend's house before. Is it okay if I use the restroom? We're always asking other people, is it okay? Is it okay? You know, we need them to say that we're doing fine to validate us. But the thing is, to seize the day and instead of always asking permission go ahead and do that thing at work without always checking in with your boss and then if you have if it's a mistake it's just easy just to apologize instead of being in that predicament where you always have to have someone else say yes go ahead and do it it's okay I approve of it if it was me I do it too no go ahead and seize that opportunity do what you need to do apologize later also, um, the third way to increase our the trust of ourselves is to understand that we know what is best for ourselves. You know, sometimes we put people on the pedestal and we think, oh, this person is so smart. They have their life all figured out. The truth is people aren't as smart, not as knowledgeable as we give them credit for. So we have to understand that, yeah, they may have one or two areas in their life that is going really well, but there are some other areas in their lives where they're struggling. And you, because you're not trusting yourself, you know, lacking that self-love, you're looking out at everybody else and saying, oh, they seem to have it better. They're doing it better than me. But that's not the thing. We have to take these people off the pedestal and say, hey, I'm the only one that knows what's best for me. You know, so we got to stop comparing ourselves. You know, one person may seem like they're farther ahead of you in a certain area and then you're knocking yourself around intern mentally. Oh, I'm dumb. I'm, I, I'm not good enough. I don't know enough. I'm just never enough. Not enough. Not enough. You know, we're saying these things, but the truth is we don't know what those other people had to do to get where they are. We haven't had the same life. We haven't had the same sacrifices. You might have come from a place from an abusive background. You know, give yourself some credit. It's, it's going to take you a longer time to get where somebody else um, came, who came from a healthier household. I, I don't think any house is totally healthy, but I'll say a healthier household. So you got to cut yourself some slack there. Also, uh, you know, people... What, what what I mean by you know what's best for you, you, you have to start telling yourself that and it might not come to you immediately that you believe it and it will take time because as I said, there has been people that might have called you names, naive, dumb, stupid. So now you're thinking, no, of course you can't, um, you know, trust yourself because all these years people have been giving you these negative labels and you just bought into it and you just think, no. Who am I to make the decision? But no, sis, you're going to have to get out there. Trust me, I know, and say, hey, I, I know what's best for me. You know, write down what you want, what your wants are, what your likes are, what your dislikes are. The reason I say to write it down, and I used to think, oh, that's so stupid. Who's really wanting to write stuff down? But sometimes if you don't know what, what your wants are, your likes your dislikes, it's helpful to see it and to go back over and to look at those notes to see what it is that you like, what are you standing on, what do you value. That way when things come your way that doesn't fit who you are, you can reject that because you're like, no, th this is not what I want to be. I don't want to portray myself this way. I'm going on to something else. All right. The fourth way to improve your trust of yourself is to force yourself to make more decisions on your own. As I said, it's okay for those big decisions. You're, you know, you, you're getting a, a new job and you might want to seek some counsel. It's okay. But if you, you're noticing that you always have to have someone else's approval and I always got to call that girlfriend on the phone to say, to ask, oh, what, it, what would she do? How would she do it? You know, that's when this is a problem. So again, so force yourself to make some more decisions on your own. Like for instance, with me, um, I like to bake. And so I would get very nervous and insecure about bacon. So I would always ask other people, oh, does it taste right? I wanted everybody's opinion, you know, but what I'm starting to do now is to taste it myself. And if I think it tastes well, then I don't have to have other people tell me, oh, it's so good. So my I love it. No. Why? Because I know it tastes good. I have my own taste of buzz. I see it's okay. Then it's okay. I put it out there for other people. If they like it, fine. But I'm not fishing around for compliments, getting them to say how great it tastes. No, I put it out there. If someone tells me it tastes good, then that's fine. But I'm not going to people, oh, what do you think? Or or saying, oh, well, um, 
there was pound cake. Did you have it? And the person says, yes. And I'm like, well, what did you think about it? You know, I'm not fishing for compliments, you know. Hey, I put it out there. So go ahead. Force yourself to make decisions. I've noticed sometimes when people, if, if you weren't validated when you were younger, people made you question your judgments and you always had to explain yourself. It causes you to have that fear of being wrong. So even at grocery stores, you might notice if you go to a big grocery store, it's hard for you to even choose things such as salad dressings. Because you don't want to be, um, you know, wrong in your decision. So you're comparing several salad dressings and you may notice it's taking you 10 minutes just to choose a salad dressing. Or you might go to the orange juice aisle and it's taking you 15 minutes. And I say this because I've done it, you know, this fear of not uh, making, you know, that, that oh, I, I just don't know what decision to make. I was at the orange juice and I was standing there so long looking at the orange juice. This woman came up and whispered to me and said, life shouldn't be that hard just shoes, you know, and I really have to think about that, like, oh my God, I'm really in here stressing out just to, to make choices in the grocery aisle, so now I'm trying to get to the point where I go in and I give myself a few minutes to make a choice, you know, you got to get in the habit of, of um, forcing yourself to make a choice, even with that, um, if, if in order to trust yourself more, make more decisions with your friends, or if you're out, uh, if you if you got someone that you're married to or you're dating, if people ask you, where do you want to eat? If you're in the habit of uh, saying, oh, whatever you want to eat is fine. No, make a decision. Have some plans in your head. Where would you like to eat and stand on that? Not just saying, oh, Mexican, okay, if it's okay with you. Do you accept Mexican? Do you think that's a good choice? No, I would like Mexican at El Burrito, you know, and stick on that. Or if uh, you never choose when you all go out for movies or things, know a movie that you want to go and see. And I'm not saying never compromise with other people, but I'm saying when people ask you what is your preference, instead of just saying, oh, whatever, whatever works for you, know your preference and give an answer for uh, what it is that you want. Uh, the fifth way to learn to trust yourself more is to realize you come across as insecure. And what I mean by that is that if you're um, trying to get people to compliment you on your, your your hair, how pretty it is, or, or, you know, people can, they can sense that. It's, it's something about us. We can sense when people are, are insecure or when they want us to make the decisions for them. And the thing is, if you have someone that really loves you, they're not going to take advantage of you. But if you have controllers out here, you have manipulators out here, and I know some people don't want to believe that, that there's evil people out here, but there is. So they can see, they can smell that. They're like, oh, this person is always looking for a pat on the back. You know, they're not secure about um, their children or their mothering. They always want um, my opinion. So they will start telling you to do things that will benefit them instead of you. Then you find yourself upset. You know, why are other people controlling me or why are people using me? And it's because you're coming off as a target. So in order to avoid that, you have to stand up for what it is uh, you know, what, what it is you want and have that backbone to know that, hey, God has created you. He didn't create any, imper you know, imperfections in you. People will say things are imperfect in you and it's not. It's just who you are. So we have to learn to love ourselves and to find a way to do that. And like I said, um, it's not a, it's not an easy thing, but with work, you can do, you can do these things. Uh, realizing that you come across as insecure, one way not to come across as insecure is to look at your motives. What, why, why are you doing what you do? You know, once you can realize that that's the first step of making a change in your behavior. If you know, wow, I only tell people that my kids are getting great grades in school is because I want them to validate me and see me as this great parent, see me as this super mom. Well, then you have to hold yourself back from telling people about your child's great grades if you know that you, your motives are not um, right. You know, that's another way that you can stop coming across as insecure because people can snip that out. They'll be like, oh, here comes um, 
Shannon, you know she's about to tell us about our little Laquisha, how her grades are, and you know Shannon just really wanted us to tell us how, um, how great she is and how proud we are of Laquisha and how Shannon has sacrificed. You know, people sense that, can sense that out. So again, this was um, a video about telling you about five ways how to trust yourself more. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment below. Let me know if agree or disagree. Have a good